Hello everyone. In this introduction to Unity video, we are going to take a look at some animation. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So, for all intents and purposes, most of the time, animation should be created outside of Unity. So, whatever 3D modeling application is used, something like Blender, Maya, 3D Studio Max, the animation should really be created in an external source rather than Unity itself. However, that doesn't mean to say that you can't do some nice animations and quick, simple animations in Unity itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this cube right here and we're going to create some animations for it. Down here you'll notice I have an animation tab. And if you don't have this animation tab, all you need to do is click these little dots here, click on add tab, and you'll see at the bottom animation. Click it and it will appear. Now, most of the time, you like I say, you shouldn't really be doing too much with animations. However, you may want to do a nice little animation. And this is just a quick introduction of how to create animations, how to manipulate them and what you can and can't do. So to start, make sure you are on the animation tab and make sure you are clicked on the object you do want to animate and then click on create. At this point, you can name it anything you want. It doesn't really matter too much. I just call it FFFFFFF. And then click Save. This window down here will now change. So this is the basic layout of how we can create an animation. And if we click the record button here, we are now set in creating an animation. You'll notice over here that we have indeed added automatically an animator component. Now, the zero here represents the first keyframe. And the first keyframe is its initial start point. So if we want our initial start point to be exactly how it is now, what you would need to do is basically set whatever the start point is. So let's have the start point of the animation at point 10, 8, and minus 3. And we can see here that these have turned red and we do have these little nodes down here. And what they do represent is that keyframe. So I'm going to move this cube through position, rotation and scale, but I do want to have everything set at first. So I want the rotation to be 90, 90 and 90. You can see that's turned red. That means it has indeed set that keyframe. And I want the scale to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So I'm going to start the animation like that. Now this works in 60 frames a second, so we can deal with this here. So if we were to change this to, let's say, frame 30 and hit enter or return, it'd move our line here to this section right here. And what that means is that this is half a second. And you can see the timings up here. You can also click the various frames along here depending where you want to go to so just keep in mind that that is one whole second and we can see that right there so let's say after half a second we want this to just increase in scale so we want it to be one 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 and you can see there that it has indeed set those keyframes and that is kind of cool now you'll notice that the rotation hand position has not set a keyframe. Now, this is where things may get a little complicated depending on what you want to do here. But realistically, you should be setting a keyframe for almost everything at each individual point. Now, if you want to set a keyframe for the exact same value, what I usually do, just nice and quick way, is retype that number and we can see there's that set. If you don't want the keyframe, that's fine. You don't have to set it like that. And let's say after one whole second, it doubles in size again. Cool. Now let's go to frame 120. That's adding another second. So 120. And let's do something else. Let's have the rotation set as 45. So it will gradually rotate after this setting right here. Now, the way you can look at this is that between, uh, can't get my words out. between each keyframe that it has that little node, it will start the animation. So because there is nothing in the way between that little node and this one over here, this animation will start playing at this point. 
So just be mindful of that. And obviously looking around all of this, there are many different things you can do with animation. You can see the curves here if you want to play around with it. Most of the time the dope sheet will do just fine because you can physically see each keyframe and that kind of helps. But if you do want to play around with the curves, you know, feel free to play around with them because you can get some awesome effects uh, depending on how you want to play around with uh, the animation itself. Um, one thing to also point out is that if an animation has been created in a separate application and then you brought it into Unity, you can still modify that animation using this method. You can still play around with it and that is kind of cool. So there are many different things you can also do with all of this. For example, if you wanted to change how a material looks or anything like that, you can play around with this. If you wanted the transparency to change, you can. You can also do it with UI elements, which I'll get around to momentarily. Now, so we've created this animation. That's all good. And let's now press that record button. And that stops the animation and it does indeed save it. And you can see this here. That is our animation file. And this one is a controller. This controls what animations can be played and can be used on particular objects. So that's something probably for another video to explain how the controllers for animators work. For now, we just have this cool animation. So if we press play, we can see everything happening up there. Cool. So that is the animation that we have created just by using simple animation keyframes. And obviously I've spent just a couple of minutes on that. So if you were to spend a lot more time, your effects would be probably much cooler than mine. Let's see that one more time. Now, this is all good. However, what if we only want the animation to play once? Well, that is where you can change it. Click on the animation and over here you'll see something called loop time. If we untick that and press play, the animation will only play once. And it will stop on that last keyframe and will remain on that last keyframe unless the animation is played again. So this kind of thing is useful if you have, let's say, an attacking animation that you only want to attack every time you press the button. You don't want the attack animation to be constantly going. However, if you've got something like an idle animation, you want that loop time to be on so as it constantly loops that idle animation so it looks more natural. And as I said, this can be done with UI elements as well. So if I go to UI and go to raw image and you can see it on the screen there, that's all good. Now let's say we wanted to create something with this raw image. Same principle would apply. Animation, create, we'd call it whatever you want. We then press the record button and set the first keyframe. Now this is where it gets really, really interesting because you can use animation with UI in so many awesome ways. So let's set this at the first keyframe. So 100 width, 100 height. Let's have the color set as white. And now let's go one second ahead. So let's go to frame 60. And there are many different things that we can play around with here. Let's set the color to red. Let's set the width to 150 and the height to 150. Let's go another second ahead. So frame 120. Let's set the alpha to quite low. So maybe 65. And let's have the width to, let's say 20 and 20. And then let's go further. Let's go to 180. And let's change the color to blue and let's have it expand to 200 and let's have the alpha back at 255. Let's stop the animation and this is that took me what 60 seconds to create let's see what effect we come up with. So you can see down there how that looks. So once again you can apply the same logic as um, what we've done here. So if you only wanted it to play once, you could. If you wanted it to loop, you could. It's just a case of changing it. So now let's do one last thing and let's make this animation seamless so it looks like it's constantly pulsating. To do that, we just need to make sure that the final keyframe and the first keyframe are indeed the same. So we could right click and take a look here. We could delete it if we wanted to. I guess it doesn't matter too much. 
But if we wanted to move it to, let's say, there, then we could, so two and a half seconds. And then the final keyframe at the actual 180th frame, we could set as these here. So remember this first keyframe at zero is set at 100, 100 and color white with full alpha. So we could do that at frame 180. So rather than give that jolting look, remember where it kind of reset the animation, we can actually make it so as it doesn't do that. So 100, 100, white. Press the record button and play. So now we can see it's not jolting. It's a seamless looping animation, which looks much better than it did. And I guess there's many different things you can do. You can play around with it so much and come up with tons of different awesome effects with animation, even just in this simplest possible way that we've created here. So what I would recommend is playing around with the dope sheet and the curves if you want to, and we can see all the kind of cool things that this is creating. So I've always found playing around with UI animation to be much more satisfying, I guess. Is that the right word to use? Because you can come up with some awesome on-screen effects with just simple UI elements. So that is an introduction to how you can create animations and modify them and just do cool different things in Unity. If you want to know any more, please leave a comment. And there's plenty of people here who'll be able to help and talk about all different things. If you want some real help, I'll try and get back to you. I, I always do my best to try and reply to comments. And yeah, as I said, hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I upload more. And hopefully I will see you around in another video. Thanks very much for watching, guys.